Welcome back to Mobility Insider. I'm Morten Hannesbo. Our channel remains unsponsored. All of the views and conclusions are based on me having worked in the automotive business for 35 years. Today we're going to talk about this car. This is the Smart Hashtag 5 2026 in the Brabus version. That means you get four-wheel drive, you get 646 horsepower, you get a fairly large car, 4 meters 70 in the length, and it weighs 2.4 tons. The Smart brand has existed as a car since 1998, and we know of them as the very small micro cars built for the cities. Now Smart is redefining the brand. First it launched the Smart Hashtag 1 a couple of years ago, then came the Hashtag 3, and now we have this very large, at least for the, for the Smart brand, the Hashtag 5, and also there'll be a micro car coming soon, the Hashtag 2. What they're doing is that they're positioning the smart brand into the premium segment where you find competition like the BMW iX3, the Tesla Model Y, and of course also the Audis, the Q4 e-tron and the Q6 e-tron. The new Hashtag 5 is available in six different versions. The lead-in is the Pro version. That will cost you 44,500 Swiss francs. That gives you 340 horsepower, a 76 kilowatt hour battery, and a acceleration from zero to 100 in 6.9 seconds. Now the Brabus version is a completely different proposition. You get 646 horsepower, you get 710 Newton meters of torque, you get a 100 kilowatt hour battery gross, 94 kilowatt hour is usable. Acceleration zero to 100 takes just 3.8 seconds. And the car is fully equipped and that will be yours for 59,500 Swiss francs. The Hashtag 5 provides a very interesting blend of performance and exclusive rocket styling at a quite competitive price point and at prices well below the BMW and Audis of this world and it still delivers a premium image and feel. The top speed is 210 kilometers per hour. And one thing where the Hashtag 5 is really fast is the charging speed, which is class leading. The car can charge with up to 400 kilowatt. At home at your charger, you can charge at 22 kilowatt, which is one of the best propositions in the class today. Smart is produced in a joint venture with the Geely Group in China. And that means they get access to the latest technology that comes out of China. In this case, it's an 800 volt architecture. It's based on the Geely SEA platform that we also find in other cars such as Polestar or Volvo. The benefits of the SEA platform is that it is high tech, it charges fast and it is very robust. But one of the drawbacks is that the efficiency is actually not that good. And that goes for Volvo and Polestar as well as for the smart products. So typically these cars have a low consumption when you drive in city areas or at lower speeds, but the moment you go on the highway, the consumption increases rather rapidly. The WLTP figure for this car is stated at 540 kilometers. The consumption under normal usage is stated to be about 21 kilowatt hours, and that is more or less the average I've seen after the first 250 kilometers. The smart history goes back to the early 1970s. At that time, Daimler-Benz was convinced that at some point in the future, there would be a strong demand for a small, nimble city car. In the 1980s, Nicolas Hayek, the person who famously saved the Swiss watch industry, he was also developing a new small car. He had the project of the Schwarzmobil, a small, nimble, agile car that would fit really well into the cities of Europe. He first turned to Volkswagen because he wanted Volkswagen to be the partner who should produce the car. But Volkswagen looked at the project and Ferdinand Piech, the boss at the time of Volkswagen, turned down the project because there was not enough potential in his, in his opinion. Nicholas Haig then in 1994 turned to Daimler-Benz and the two companies formed the new company, the Micro Compact Car Company, and that would later turn into the smart car company as we know it today. And then shortly after the company had been founded, Mercedes built a new factory in France that was nicknamed Smartville. That produced the first car from Smart, the Smart City Coupe, that was later then changed to the Smart for Two. 
After the first products hit the market in 1998, Smart continued to develop new products and launched the Smart 44 and the Smart Broadster. And the volume then slowly grew over the coming years. However, at the time there were difficult market conditions and financial trouble mounted for the Smart company. In 2006, Daimler-Benz took over the entire company and the sales volume was developing well over the following years at around the 100,000 unit mark worldwide. Later in the 2010s, the volume dropped and in 2019, the company needed to have a new approach. Daimler-Benz formed a joint venture with the Chinese car company Geely and they decided to move the entire production of the smart products to China. The joint venture with Geely now gave a good basis for Smart to grow their volume and launch a new range of products that were more future-proof. They have access to the very excellent SEA platform from Geely that is also used by the other products of the car group. And there will be a number of new products coming to the market, hashtag one, hashtag three already here, hashtag five that we're driving, and there will also be a smaller hashtag too very soon. So how does the smart hashtag 5 drive? Well, three things I would say that uh, that I noticed when I first got into the car is that it is extremely spacious inside. It is a very solidly built car. The whole thing feels like one piece. Second is that it is very quiet. Of course an electric car is expected to be quiet, but the smart hashtag 5 is more quiet than I would expect from a car in this price range. And thirdly, the power of the two motors, 646 horsepower, is absolutely immense and probably almost too much for a car of this size. And I think many drivers will just actually put the car into comfort mode or eco mode because you still have plenty of power. There's no need for the sport or the Bravos mode in daily usage. The car really drives well. You have a feeling of a larger car than actually the size of the vehicle would suggest. It's 4 meters 70 in the length and it's 216 in the width. So it is of course not by any means a small vehicle. The suspension is very solid. Uh, I tried to accelerate the other day in heavy rain and the car was absolutely perfect. No hesitation or no slipping the wheels. That was quite impressive. In terms of the interior design, it works really well. You've got high quality plastics, you've got Alcantara-like seats, got an Alcantara-like steering wheel, and it all feels quite sporty, as you would expect from a Brabus-inspired vehicle. You have a sound system with 20 loudspeakers and a center speaker that will lift up when you turn on the car. And that are nice details that I think uh, deserve praise for uh, the design team at Smart. The seats are really very comfortable and you have plenty of space in the rear as well. And one thing I like is that you can adjust the seats electrically, of course, in the front, but also on the back seat, the seat backrest can be adjusted electrically. And if you are a passenger in the rear seat to the passenger side, you can also adjust the seat in front of you to give you more leg space when you sit in the rear. We're now doing the standard test route, which of course is 57 kilometers with a good mix, 40% highway, 40% country road and 20% city area. I expect the consumption to be okay with about 18 kilowatt hours. So probably we'll see at the end of the test how good or not good the car performs. So let me add a comment about the consumption. 20.2 after 235 kilometers is a respectable consumption, I would say 16.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on the test route, also respectable, but not at the uh, level of the best cars, which would be in this case uh, for the segment, the Tesla Model Y. And why is that? Well, the Hashtag 5 is a big car in this segment. It's wide, it's heavy, 2.4 tons, 4 meters 70 in the length. And the coefficient of drag also is quite high with 0.3. And that, of course, means that you will never get a record setting vehicle in terms of efficiency. So I would say I really like the car overall. Drives well, everything is fine, but there are a couple of things that are quite annoying. I think the voice control function doesn't work that well. It sometimes intrudes, you don't wanna have voice control support and it will still interfere with the music that you're listening to. 
Another thing that is quite annoying is that there's a lot of... To hear you enjoy your car overall. Thank it's you. Understandable to find... This is exactly what I mean. It is quite stupid. So in terms of the screens you have, there's a lot of reflection in, this, in the screens and that does annoy you when you're driving the car. And it's not enough just to close the uh, sun blind for the glass roof. You still get the reflection from the side of the vehicle. And then one last little thing is that the key fob actually is upside down. So you hold the key normally like this. And then of course you have to turn it around to see what function you want to use which is a little bit annoying too. Another thing that could be improved is that you do not have any control of the temperature if you're a rear seat passenger. You are reliant on what the front passengers have decided for you. And maybe finally a comment on the screen and the menu system. You have so many functions and it is almost impossible to figure out where to change what. You will eventually figure it out but it will take quite some time. That brings me to the conclusion after having been driving the Hashtag 5 for 10 days. I think it's really nice to see that the smart brand is back in the marketplace because it was parked on the parking lot for forgotten brands for a few years, but now they're back with a vengeance. And what they have produced here is a great family SUV and it's a car that has an attitude and I like that too. What I really like about the car is the way it drives. It has, of course, a lot of power, but it is delivered in a really comfortable way. So you can use it and you can decide not to use it. It will never actually overwhelm you when you drive it. I also like the spaciousness of the vehicle. Yes, it is big, but it actually feels even bigger when you are inside the vehicle because of its air and the design they have chosen for the car. Maybe what I like less about the car is the high consumption. This is something we have seen in other products from the Geely Group, the Volvos and the Polestars and others. And that also goes for the Smart Hashtag 5. You can expect a consumption in nice warm weather like today to be around 21 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And that is approximately 20% higher than comparable vehicles that have better efficiency of drag. Design-wise, what you get is a boxy shape. It resembles a little bit the Skoda Yeti that was in the market a few years ago, or maybe a more modern car like the Mini we have today. I think some people will like it, and I think some people will probably not like it. Two other things that I noticed that did not quite live up to my expectations is first of all, the menu system in the in-car entertainment. It is very complicated. You have all of the functions that you will be asking for, but to find them in the menu system is quite a challenge. The second thing are the driver assist systems. They are okay, they work, but they don't give a comfortable drive as you will find it in some of the other cars in the marketplace that do a better job with that. I've decided to give the car 3.5 stars out of a possible four. It is a very good car and it is one of the positive surprises that I have had this year while testing cars. Thank you for watching Mobility Insider. Don't forget to subscribe, to comment and like the video and share it with someone you think that might benefit from seeing it. Thank you and see you in the next video.